Hello everybody and welcome to today's video. I hope you're all doing very well. So today I'm gonna to be expanding off the previous tutorial video just a little bit where I showed you how to filter out entity queries by a shared component. This time I'm gonna be showing you another way to filter out your entity queries in Unity ECS using what's known as the change filter. Now you don't necessarily need to see the shared component video before you watch this one. Um, I'm just saying it's kind of like a similar concept, but I do think that that is a good video um, and it does bring up some good topics about data oriented programming in general. So I highly suggest you go check that video out after this one. I will leave a link up in the card as well as in the description below. So anyways, back to change filters. So based off of the name, you may have some indication about what this does and how it can be used to filter out entity queries. However, there are some quirks to it and it may not work exactly as you think it does. I know it works a little bit different than I initially thought that it would. Um, so today I'm gonna to be giving you an explanation about how exactly it works, You know, when is the best time to use these change filters. And then I'm actually gonna be showing you how to implement it using this little JRPG style battle scene that you see playing behind me. Anyways, if you do find today's video helpful and you learned something, really appreciate it if you hit that like button. Also feel free to subscribe to the channel for lots more videos about Unity's entity component system and their data oriented technology stack. Of course, if you do have any questions for me or suggestions for future videos, you can leave those down in the comment section below or join us over on Discord over at tmg.dev slash Discord. So let's kind of start at the top. You know, what is the exact purpose of change filters in ECS? So basically this is when you want to process a group of entities when an entity that has that component that you're basically filtering against um, has changed since the last time the system has ran. Now, if you pay close attention to that statement, then you might see that change filters don't work exactly the way that you might think they would. Um, so I know the way that I initially thought that change filters would work is if you changed any data on a certain component, that that change filter would only filter out for those specific components. Now, that's not exactly the case. What it really means is that if one component on one entity changes, anything that has that component that changed will basically fall under that change filter. Now, furthermore, if a component is just opened for write access, but the data, the, the actual data values are not changed, it still will actually be marked as changed and uh, fall under that change filter as well. So it, it basically only tracks when a component is open for write access. So for example, if you set the component through an entity manager, or even if you just pass in the component to a for each statement using the ref keyword, which of course opens it up for write access, even if you do not actually change any of the values on it, it will still mark that component as changed. Now don't worry if you don't totally get this right now. Um, when I go to the tutorial section of the video, I'm gonna be showing you exactly you know, what all this, this means in a practical sense. So the way we can apply change filters is using the dot with change filter. Um, so it's very similar to like a dot with all or a dot with any that I believe um, I went over in my tags video just a couple weeks ago. And the documentation states that you also must include any component types that you use in the with change filter, either as parameters of your for each job or using a with all statement to basically guarantee that the entities that you're filtering against actually has that component. Now you can actually pass up to two component types inside the with change filter, but this basically tracks if one or the other has changed, not if both of them have changed. And so again, I'll show you what this means in a practical sense when we get to the tutorial section of the video, which happens to be right now. All right, so here we are over in Unity and I basically created this little JRPG style battle scene. Um, so basically the idea is when we press the one, two, three, or four keys, this corresponds to the enemies here, this uh, you know, plant, scorpion, bat, and bird, and then basically, um, you know, the knight is kind of you know our main character. So basically, the idea is like if I hit the one key, it's going to go ahead and attack the plant, um, and then his health is actually decrementing in the back end. But we want it to update this actual slider for his health to actually decrease when we do attack him. So we can actually use change filters so we're not like updating our UI every single frame. We're only updating the UI when the actual value has changed. So this is definitely one of the main use cases for change filters is using things like UI and other managed data components where we need to maybe do some a little bit less inefficient coding by integrating with some older 
features of Unity, but we can limit the amount of times that we actually call those functions by using change filters to only update those when they actually need to be updated. All right, so for starters, here's the battle system. I'm just gonna show you off this real quick. I've kind of hid away some of the enemy setup here. It's just kind of some ugly code that we don't really need to worry about. But by the way, all the code and project files for today's video are going to be available using the links in the description below. Um, and then over in the on update function, here's where we define an entity for the target entity. And then in this input region here, you basically see where I have, if we press the one key, then the enemy one is going to be the targeted entity. Same thing if we press the two key, three key, four key, and so on. Otherwise, if we don't press any key, we'll just go ahead and return out of here. So then here, we're just going to go ahead and grab the enemy's health off that target entity that we just got. And then as you can see here, we're just going to take the value and we're going to decrement it by our attack power. And of course, we're just going to go ahead and have to um, set that component data back onto that entity so the changes are actually reflected. Now, doing this right here is going to mark that enemy health data type as changed so that in another system, say this update health UI system, we can actually filter against the enemy health data components. And when it's changed, we can actually go ahead and run our logic to update the UI. So the way we actually do this in the on update function, we're going to do um, just an entities dot for each. But before the for each, we're just going to go ahead and do a dot with change filter. And then you can see here inside the type brackets, we can define a data type that we would like to basically filter out against. So in this case, it's going to be the enemy health data. The next step, I'll just go ahead and go on to another line. And here's where we're going to actually do our for each function. And so here is where we'll define an entity just called E. And we're going to be using this just for a little bit of debugging later on. Um, next thing is we're going to need the enemy health UI. Now this is a managed data component, so we do not define it with the ref or in keywords. I will leave a link to in the description for another video that I made that goes over using UI and Unity ECS, and it goes a little bit more in depth on using managed data components. Then finally, we're just gonna go ahead and use the in keyword for read only on our enemy health data. Just call this health data. And then that's so we can actually have a reference to the actual value of health data. So we can go ahead and set the ui.slider.value equal to the health data dot value. And then finally, because we are using managed data components for the UI, we're just gonna have to do a dot without burst and run this on the main thread. Now, one of the last thing that I'd like to do is just do a little bit of debugging so we can actually see which entities are being updated and when they're being updated. So we'll just go ahead and do a debug dot log. And so this just prints out a little statement saying updating health UI on e dot index. So this is just going to print out the index of the entity that is being updated. So we'll come back to Unity and go ahead and enter play mode. We have the health data um, just set to its initial value. So there is kind of a change that happens at the beginning of the frame. And so as such, we see that we're updating the health UI on entities one, two, three, and four, which are just these four enemies right here. So I'll go ahead and clear this out. Now I'll press the number one key. So we're gonna go ahead and attack this plant right here. And you'll see that the health decrements for this plant of course, it stays the same for the rest of them because we're only attacking this one enemy. Now, if we go over to the console, you'll see that we're update, we're still updating the health UI on all four of these enemies. Now, again, the reason for that is because even though one, only one of these components has actually changed, it basically marks that whole component as changed. So anything that has that component now applies under that change filter. Of course, we can clear this out and say if we hit the two key to attack the scorpion, you know, you're gonna see the exact same thing happens. We're gonna still update the health UI on all four of these entities. So that's just kind of a quirk and something to keep in mind when you're using these change filters, that it doesn't filter on just the single component that has changed, but if one component has changed, then it will filter against all of those. And just to demonstrate that actually changing the value doesn't matter, we can go ahead and comment this line out where uh, we're actually decrementing the value of the enemy health. So basically all we're doing here is we're getting the enemy health and we're setting the enemy health back to what it already is. So we can go ahead and enter play mode here and you'll see when I press the one key to attack the plant, now it doesn't actually decrement the health the UI because you know, we didn't actually attack it. It's not it's not decrementing the health. Um, but, you know, come over to the console and you'll see that still all four of these entities 
are basically being flagged as changed on that specific component even though the actual value has not changed. So go ahead and uncomment this line out. And then the last thing that I just wanted to show off is again for the with change filter, we can filter up to two components. So we can just do say a comma, um, we'll just go ahead and filter against the translation component. So you'll see that even though these entities are not moving at all, if we press one of the keys here to um, attack one of these enemies it does update the enemy health component but not the translation component but you see here in the console that um, basically that filter is still triggered and we're going to update the health ui on all four of these enemies here so again when we're doing the with change filter with two different components we're going to be filtering out changes on one or the other of these components not necessarily both of these components so anyways that's going to wrap up today's video on unity's change filters for their entity component system um, hope this kind of cleared up some of the misconceptions that you may have had about change filters i know um, that they didn't work exactly how I expected them to work. Again, this is how change filters work in the current version of Unity, which at the time of recording is the most recent version, which is 0.17. So maybe it will change in the future. If it does, I will be sure to make an updated video on this because I do think that they are a useful thing to use in the right circumstances. So anyways, if you did enjoy today's video and you found it helpful, I'd really appreciate it if you hit that like button. Also feel free to subscribe to the channel for lots more videos about Unity's entity component system and their data oriented technology stack of course if you do have any questions for me or suggestions for future videos you can always leave those down in the comment section below or come join us over on discord over at tmg.dev discord anyways hope you all have a fantastic rest of your day i'll see you in the next one